Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's session on the PTI profile version 1.1.a. Um, this morning, we will look at um, the changes to it since the um, version 1.1 document that was uh, released last summer. Um, and we will also pick up as part of this the changes that have been made um, since the um, consultation draft was sent out uh, a few weeks ago. Um, much of what you'll see in here today, um, if you were involved in the um, session um, just after that, um, consultation draft was released, um, you will have uh, heard before, um, so uh, apologies um, in advance for that. Um, I'm just going to try and work out where that noise is coming from. Okay, so um, I welcome questions. Um, please feel free to use the chat um, function, um, and we'll get to a uh, to an open um, Q and A um, at the end. Um, obviously, um, I'm not going to be paying too much attention to the questions as they if they come in during. Um, the uh, the going through the slide deck, but um, they please feel free to to put them in, um, and I'll pick them up at the end. Okay, so um, the public transport information profile version one point one point a. Um, so um, since version one point one, there have been thirteen potential XML changes that you're going to need to make to your um, systems. Um, I say potential because they don't affect everybody. Um, it depends entirely on how you've um, developed your uh, system as to whether you will need a, uh, a change or not. Um, nine of those changes um, have come from um, feedback um, from um, yourselves and colleagues, um, and they are trying to sort out um, either technical challenges or operator compliance challenges, such as bank holidays um, and um, stop point um, categorization, that sort of thing. Um, one of the XML changes is um, a potential security risk that we're trying to close down. Um, and that I think is the only potential breaking change um, in 1.1.a for anybody. Um, but again, it depends on how you've um, coded your system. Um, one of them um, introduced since the um, draft um, went out is a bug change to uh, day shift and two of the changes uh, are linked to um, links with an integration with location data. So um, if you've looked at the document, you'll be used to um, red arrows and yellow arrows um, highlighting where there's mandatory requirements and optional um, requirements and advice. Um, since 1.1, we've introduced some BOD specific implementation advice. Um, whilst the profile can be used for other things, um, it is has been developed to uh, achieve the um, BOD's requirements, and so most implementations are likely to be um, uh, to supply or consume data from BODs. So we've put in um, implementation advice and information about the validator tests that uh, BODs are going to be using. 
Um, as we go through um, the changes this morning, um, where there's a profile change, something that might have a coding change to a system, then that's highlighted by a uh, by a little uh, XML icon. Um, where it's feedback, um, this is pre the consultation. You've got a feedback thing and um, the black um, discussion is where there are changes since the consultation. And they're perhaps the ones to, to concentrate on today. Um, it's worth just um, picking up on a couple of implementation things before we get into the detail. Um, there are two sorts of checks that happen within um, BODS. One is the validator, which checks compliance. That's a yes, no. Um, have you got data in this field? Um, type um, discussion. Um, the um, other is data quality checks um, that look at the quality and accuracy. So we'll look at things like um, have um, you got um, times between stops that mean that a vehicle is going to have to go unfeasibly quickly, for example. Um, and the validator checks, those that are to do with hard compliance issues, they're all things that are mandated in the profile requirements. So the validator is checking for those mandated things. Um, and if you want to know more about the data quality tests, then um, there's a link um, on the screen. Um, these slides will be circulated um, to the normal groups. Um, if you specifically want to make sure you're going to get a copy because you're not on something like PTIC or the normal DFT um, distribution list for this sort of thing, then uh, and do drop me a line. So um, let's get into the um, changes. General changes. Um, so this is tidying up language and bad links and things like that. There's some um, bad links and typos that were spotted post consultation. Um, I don't think there are any bad links in particular um, anymore. Um, one of the key um, things that we um, changed uh, in the uh, the A release is um, previously there'd been a lot of um, data elements that had said not used um, and lots of people were and the, and the text around that was implying um, that uh, it should not be used um, but um, we've changed most of those to optional because if somebody's got that data and can supply it um, then um, it is uh, going to be useful for um, potential downstream um, users. So specific changes uh, and advice. Um, so as part of versioning in BODS, um, so this isn't actually profile related, this is BODS related. Um, we've clarified and updated the versioning things and text. Um, so um, revision numbers need to increase for each version. Um, previously, it suggested that um, it had to increment by one each time. Um, it doesn't have to. Um, a new revision just needs to have a higher revision number than, uh, than previous ones. Um, and um, there's a key optional point that we've added um, in because um, when you start to um, try and manage in practice um, lots of trans exchange files, um, version control can easily cause problems. So um, some suppliers and systems we know 
are splitting trans exchange up into multiple files um we would advise that all of the data goes into um, a single trans exchange file rather than having multiples just to reduce complexity um so if you've got problems where an operator is saying that we're not seeing the data that we're expecting you know we've only got half of our services uh, online showing um then it's going to be much easier to work out what's going on if it's all in one file um and for downstream users it's going to be much easier to correctly interpret um the the service details that are operating um the guidance on versioning um, and examples have been updated um because there were a few questions um and um, the validated tests have remained the same um moving on to notes so this is where you can make notes about um data that's been provided um this is the um potential breaking change um the validator is now testing for a list of disallowed characters that are in the profile document um, and that's to protect against injection attacks um, particularly downstream where we don't know um, how much sanitization and protection um, data consuming systems might have um, it might not affect you because you might be sanitizing the data um, customers might not be putting in um, any of the affected characters and things like that um, but we would advise people to sanitize the data before you uh, submit it um, and so therefore this is a potential breaking change but it does depend on how you've implemented uh, the system um, private notes um, aren't um, allowed um, this data when it's supplied to bods is being made public so um if you want to keep anything private then you shouldn't be supplying in this data set to bods um you need to be extracting it um before it gets there um and as a result all notes must be uh set to uh private is false which is the default um but uh, it's just worth reminding uh, you of that um service organizations um these are mandated in regulation if a journey um serves a school or college or or another education establishment um and the validator does a number of tests to make sure that meaningful data is being provided so what this is trying to achieve is um getting over people providing for example sch for school um because it's actually much more useful for data consumers to know um either what that specific establishment is um or if it's a particular authority to schools because then it's easy to check that the data that's um, in there about um, when services are running or not um, is accurate um, and correct. Um, one of the um, implications um, of having serviced organisations um, in trans exchange is that um, it does mean that um, operators do need to keep up to date with working day changes. So when a service is registered at the moment you might register it indefinitely but school term dates for example will only be published for 18 months two years in advance and so um, rather than just registering and forgetting about it um, operators are going to have to keep these dates up to date um, on a regular basis to make sure that um, journey planners and things like that properly uh, know what's happening Okay, uh, operator, um, 
following um, the consultation, we've added some more background um, examples and uh, an advice about NOC code um, because um, there was a bit of um, confusion in some quarters about um, which NOC code you should use and things like that. Um, the validator tests that there's only one operator's data supplied in the transit exchange file um, and that um, you're not using licensed operator. That does mean that the data that's supplied to BODS um, isn't the same data that you can supply into EBSR because EBSR requires licensed operator because it includes other things that uh, that downstream data consumers and the public are uh, not likely to need. Um, one thing to note is that post the release of um, 1.1.a, um, we've had some discussions um, and um, there is a field in Trans Exchange license number. Um, the wording of the description of the data that goes into that at the moment um, is not as good as it could be, um, but that license number is the license number of the operator responsible for operating that service. So if you've got a group and you've got multiple um, operating companies with O licenses and therefore NOC codes, um, it's that operating license number that needs to be put into that, the one that registered the service, not a group or um, anything like that. It's it's the one that's actually got the license to operate the service. Um, okay, um, services, um, a big one that's come out during consultation. Um, people um, still not clear that um, BODS data is all about registrations um, and the data needs to be supplied at um, registration level rather than um, line or route based so that if you've got split registrations um, that's two different um, service codes. So that's two sets of files that need to be provided. Um, and where you've got multiple lines on a registration, they need to have the same service code um, to make sure that the data is trackable back to um, the DBSA data sources. So um, BODS can check on compliance make sure that operators are supplying all the data that they're supposed to. Um, so there's still, as I say, um, some people that have uh, yet to get their heads around this um, about BODS. Um, so uh, it's worth reiterating um, that a few times. Um, service codes, um, the validator checks that there's only one service element um so that um helps enforce the one registration per file um arrangement um and there's more um examples and advice um on how to create the service code um in there okay uh, operating dates um the original 1.1 release um, talked about um, one year's worth of um, data if you're going to provide an end date. So in the profile, you should only be putting um, an end date against a um, service or a line where you actually know that that is an end date. So, for example, a contractual end date. Um, if you've registered a service um, uh, for um, you know, the foreseeable future, then you don't know when that end date is, and so therefore you shouldn't be supplying one. And uh, the validator makes does a test to, to look at the end date to, um, to make sure that uh, people aren't providing um, you know, 2099 and that sort of date that, uh, that 
some systems have historically used. Um, it checks that it's not a date that's um, more than the likely longest contract um, that anybody's going to be awarded. So, uh, so 11 years. Hopefully that's long enough. If somebody's got a contract that's longer, then uh, do let us know. Um, journey pattern validators testing for at least one journey pattern um, for a standard service. Um, and also that interchange activity uh, is, is either change or through. Um, the other potential options in trans exchange aren't valid in BODS. Um, so we've got a new red requirement um, that has appeared post the consultation. Um, and this is um, to help downstream users um, where there are split registrations um, and data is needing to be pieced together. So where you've got information about a line um, that's, that is split across registrations. Um, the line name needs to be consistent um, across each service in, in the different files. Um, and so that's one way of helping downstream users piece the data together. Um, in A, we introduced um, line color element as optional specifically rather than the more general, just optional, because um, there'd been quite a lot of feedback from operators that this was really important to them. Um, lines, um, the validator is checking that um, where you've got multiple line elements um, in a file, um, they have some relationship to each other. Um, and that's the minimum um, in effect that you could possibly have where um, you've got two lines that share two stops. Um, and so it's testing for that. Um, and it's testing that there's an appropriate description, either outbound or inbound, um, or both of them, um, depending on whether your service is being defined as inbound or outbound. Um, stop points, um, the working assumption um, of BODS is that, and the profile is that all stops should be in NAPTAM, um, and if they're not, then they need to go in there. Um, you can use um, bespoke stop points, but if you try and set a um, a, a used date in the um, in a journey pattern or something like that, and that's longer than two months, then um, you're going to get an error. Um, two months um, should be plenty of time to uh, agree a new stop or alternative arrangements, um, uh, and it's longer than any known event that um, we could come up with. Um, and um, if you've got a diversion that's needing um, a stop for an extended period, then that really should be in that turn because that helps downstream users, um, helps map-based systems like um, uh, Apple and uh, Bing and Google um, present data properly. Um, Okay, routes and tracks. So um, the way that things go between um, stops, um, the profile is trying to encourage um, these um, root sections. So the you know the, the the going from one stop to another that they that they can be reused because that helps significantly file sizes and downstream users understand what's going on. Um, BODS does want to encourage people to put tracks in, so not just it goes from stop A to stop B, but it goes along these roads at 
um, at, for using mapping. Um, and uh, that's because it really helps present information to customers um, better. Customers are known to um, be more confident if the line on the map between two stops follows the road rather than um, as the crow flies. Um, and it also helps real-time systems create better predictions. Um, and the validators does a number of uh, checks on um, the routes and tracks to make sure that um, they're appropriate and valid. Journey patterns. Um, so uh, you've got to have at least one journey pattern for each direction that the service operates. Um, originally in 1.1, um, it wasn't quite clear that um, the profile wasn't expecting two journey patterns, even if you got an outbound only service, for example, or a circular service that only went one way around. Um, something that's um, appeared since um, the consultation draft went out. Um, so in journey pattern stop usage, previously you were only allowed um, timing points and um, other um, there's a bit of a clash with uh, EBSR um, and so we're relaxing the rule um, and including the ability to use time information points um, so hopefully that solves um, problem for operators that are supplying data to um, uh, EBSR um, as well as this. And then um, the validator um, does some um, checks to make sure that journey patterns um, valid and you're not um, only overriding part of um, the information um, if you've got a journey that does something slightly different from the other 99 that that um, service operates. Um, activity, so this is activity at stop. Um, version 1.1 wanted the activity at every stop to be explicitly specified. Um, and that was creating some very large files for no real um, benefit. So now, um, the profile accepts um, the trans exchange default behavior. So if you don't supply activity, you can assume that um, it's going to be pick up and set down at that stop. Um, but um, if you've already got your system coded so that it provides activity at every stop, um, that's going to be um, perfectly acceptable and provides um, all the information that somebody's going to need, um, so you don't need to make any change um, there if you've already um, developed it against 1.1. Um, vehicle journey, um, this is one, this is the bug that um, was identified. The profile document um, said um, departure day shift should only um, uh, B plus one um, uh, should have said one because uh, departure day shift field is, is an integer um, rather than uh, uh, text field. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's sorting out that bug. Um, and um, as part of vehicle journey, the validator um is uh, is checking some overrides again um and making sure that there is some form of destination provided either um as a de destination display or a dynamic destination display um in operating profile so this is um when uh, journeys are going to run for example um, there's a couple of um, text changes in the uh, XML examples um, that have been corrected 
um, and also um, the fact that um, as um, historically acceptable, you can have a space between the uh, between the value and the uh, and the slash at the end. Um, one thing is that um, we'd really like to see it consistent in a file. So please don't try not to provide Monday um, slash and Tuesday space slash. Um, let's try and be consistent um, in that. Um, and there was also another um, in the XML sample um, in the document, um, which has been uh, corrected in uh, release A. So one of the key things in operating profile is bank holidays. Um, we know that Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve aren't technically bank holidays, but they are listed explicitly in Trans Exchange, and Trans Exchange thinks that they are. Um, so unfortunately, we have to live with um, that. Um, coding of Scottish bank holidays from the um, consultation release, we'd, um, we'd change that so it wasn't mandatory, um, which is making life a lot easier for um, probably most operators out there. Um, and um, we have clarified um, post the consultation um, that where an operator has got a service that runs entirely within Scotland and he's wanting to put data into BODS, then all of the English bank holidays need to be populated, even though um, the late August bank holiday isn't um, routinely um, um, oh, what's the word? Um, applied in Scotland, uh, observed, that's the one, observed in Scotland. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, um, there is no easy way of uh, deciding um, and determining within Trans Exchange whether a, um, a service is Scotland only or England only. Um, Okay, um, one of the um, implications um, of coding bank holidays um, and requiring them to be explicitly listed rather than using the catch-all, uh, all bank holidays is that in the same way for serviced organisations, operators are going to need to resupply data um, at least annually um, to make sure that days of operation are correct because the coding for Boxing Day and New Year's Day is going to need to change each year, uh, depending on the day of the week. Um, so um, uh, it's worth uh, making sure that um, operate, your operator customers, for those of you that are suppliers, um, are aware of that and have got that um, those updates um, penciled in in their, in their diaries. Um, and um, we've um, uh, added some um, extra bits to the uh, to the sample uh, XML code for bank holidays. Then um, final set of changes um, are related to real time information. Um, so the profile document um, was. Um, not particularly helpful um, in saying that um, the references needed to be the same elements used in Siri VM. Most of the time, um, they're using different um, names, so therefore that's not appropriate. So it's changed to equivalent. Um, in previous releases, it's been unclear. Um, how Trans Exchange and Siri um, for vehicle location data is going to match journey code because um, there's a number of different places that that could be gained from. So um, it's now being explicit that it's ticket machine journey code. 
um, that's the field that uh, that's going to be expected to match um, and um, changing the um, the um, profile text so that not only block needs to be provided as soon as it's available journey code does as well so journey code and block um, are typically operational data that you might not know at the time of registration um, but you will know um, closer to the time once the detailed operation has been planned um, and so um, uh, needs to be um, updated in BODS to make sure that downstream data users that are consuming um, routes and timetables and journey location can piece that together uh, as easily as possible to produce uh, predictions, um, for example. Um, we've added um, some examples of journey codes and block numbers to help people recognize um, what that data um, is and should be. Um, and um, the um, validator um, is looking for um, journey code and block number um, close to um, the, uh, no, it's not the validator, it's the data quality test um, is looking for um, block and journey number, uh, journey code um, uh, closer to the, uh, to the go live for a service because it can't be validator because that you be supplying data potentially um, in advance of journey code and block being available. So those are the um, changes since the consultation and since um, version 1.1. Um, hopefully they're all um, self-explanatory and you understand them. Um, before we open for questions, I'm just going to reiterate this because whilst it's technically not profile, um, it is um, something that there's quite a lot of data that, that isn't following at the moment. Um, and that is to reiterate the points that um, BODS is registration based, it's not line or route based, it's not the same structure that you might have been supplying to travel line for um the last um few years um and there are two implications to that one is that if you're supplying data you need to be breaking it up if you've got split registrations or um compositing lines together if they're on the same registration as each other um and for downstream users um it's um, you're going to need to get your head around how um, split registrations work and how you're going to um, piece that data together so you can provide a uh, a proper um, through set of data for customers. So, um, any questions? That was the um, all of the changes that have been made. Um, hopefully, they resolve. Um, the problems that you were having. Um, so, um, has anybody got any questions? Um, either stick them in the chat or um, unmute yourself and um, raise them. No, okay. Um, the updated profile document um, is available on the PTIC um, and RTIG websites. Um, there is both a clean version and also um, a track changes version from version 1.1, so you can see those changes um, if you're wanting to uh, to look at them in detail yourselves. Um, and um, you probably got them emailed to you by uh, by the department or PTIC. Um, there are 
slide decks um, for um, just the changes to uh, post consultation, um, as well as um, the um, changes between 1.1 and consultation. Um, and these slides will be uploaded there um, in a little bit. Um, David has asked a very good question. Um, how are split registrations going to link through fares in NetEx? Um, because um, fares typically don't um, obey registration. Um, splits and things like that. Um, David, that's a very good question. That's one that the BODS project team uh, are aware of um, and um, they're working through that. Um, I don't have an answer for you on that um, at the moment, but uh, it's a good question. It, it was just to flag it because lots of operators are asking us because they're their services work on their ticket machines to provide through fares and acceptance of tickets and having to change the registration is a big change within um, the ticket machine. And if it's then going to compromise NetEx, we, we just want to make sure if we're going to have to change that we don't compromise NetEx at the same time. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Has anybody got anything else that they want to raise no okay excellent um if after the event you um think of something or when you start to um implement it um and you come up with questions and queries then please do um get in contact um, either with me directly or with the uh, BODS team um, and um, we'll do our best to um, uh, clarify um, what the problem is or uh, how to how to overcome the, the problem. So um, if there are no more questions, um, I'll thank you for your time this morning um, and hope you have a good rest of the day and a good weekend. <laughs>